Good morning. Let's talk about the facial nerve. Memorizing the seg segments can be a bit hard, but hopefully this simplified model can help us recall the names and the sequence of the segments. The facial nerve has four main segments, the interaxial segment in the brainstem, <clears throat> cisternal and canalicular segment, the intratemporal segment, and the extracranial segment. The extracranial segment is the segment which branches within the parotid gland to supply the muscles of facial expression. So in this model, we see the intraaxial segment, the cisternal segment, the temporal, intratemporal, and the extracranial segment. While we trace the intratemporal segment later, watch out for this three colored nerve branches. This one. Uh, these are the nerve branches which serves the three so-called special functions of the facial nerve. So from proximal to distal, we have theory to represent the greater superficial petrosal nerve, problems of which would cause lacrimation problems. Noisy to represent the nerve to the stapedius, problem of which would lead to non-dampening of sound or hyperacusis. And third, hungry or tasty to represent the corda tympani, problem of which would lead to loss of taste to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The term corda tympani may be a bit confusing as one might think it might relate to ear function as the term tympani would suggest. However, let's just remember that it got its name because of its course in the middle ear. So another way to remember these seg segments or branches from proximal to distal is to remember I weep at the sound of hunger. So let's start with the intraaxial segment. So this picture shows that there is more than one nucleus for the facial nerve. But let's just focus on the orange one here. This is the motor nucleus for the facial nerve. Notice that it sends out fibers to loop around another nucleus here in violet. And this violet nucleus is the uh, abducens nucleus. Because of this configuration, there is a bulging here at the floor of the fourth ventricle, forming the facial colliculus. Here on the right, in our model, we see the uh, facial nerve nucleus with its fibers looping around the abducens nucleus. So just remember, uh, the facial colliculus, this one, has in it the nucleus of cranial nerve 6 as well as the looping fibers of cranial nerve 7. Um, the nerve then exits here at the pontomedullary junction and takes a bath in the cistern. In this area, it courses together with cranial nerve 8. So 7 and 8 in the cisternal segment. So just a quick application. If we have a patient with both Cranial nerve 6 and 7 symptoms, for example, double vision as well as semifacial palsy or weakness, the lesion is probably here in the intraaxial segment. However, if the patient has both 7 and 8 symptoms, such uh, uh, cranial nerve 7 and 8 symptoms, um, the pathology might be here in, here in the cisternal segment. Look for a mass lesion here like a schwannoma or a vascular loop.